Welcome back. Well, we continue our look at the New Look magazine, hitting the market under new editors now. But will a greater focus on style and design, including travel, living and food at InStyle, help ward off competition coming from a new entrant, L later this year, well, Kirsten Galliott joined Pacific Magazine's in style from Fairfax Media's The Sydney Magazine and joins us now to tell us more. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Um, just take us through the, the new look and um, do you think, I mean, is this something that would have happened without a new editor coming yeah. in? <laughs> well, I can't speak for my predecessor. I think that with magazines, with any media, obviously you have to innovate all the time. Um, but obviously with my experience of coming in new, it was a chance to have a look at the magazine quite fresh. And March is obviously an incredibly important month for the style magazines. So really what I did was, you know, get in, settle in a bit, have a good look at the market, and then make my changes for March. So, you know, that's the big hit. That's the one I want, so. Mm -hmm. Now you've come back to consumer magazines after being away for a while. You worked in inserted uh, magazines with mm. Fairfax. Um, consumer mags, inserted, newspaper business, who's got the better business model? Oh, well, they're obviously completely different. <laughs> Look, I have to say that, you know, I spent nearly 10 years at Fairfax and had an amazing 10 years. Like, it was so rewarding, incredible. I'm a huge, loyal supporter of Fairfax. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm a magazine person, and obviously it's fantastic to be in magazines and to have that support. I mean, Pacific has just, what they've done in the past. When I first worked at Pacific, way back when, in 2001, maybe it was, <laughs> uh, you know, it was a completely different company. It was really the also-ran company. Um, obviously, ACP was much stronger. And you know, in the last 10 years, what Nick Chan has done with that company is extraordinary. I mean, it is absolutely the premier magazine company to be at. And you know, they give you support. So, for example, you know, with this March issue, I had a feeling that I wanted to add 20 pages of homes into this, this magazine because I feel that this market is passionate about interiors. And of course, interiors is not, you know, style is not just about what we wear, the makeup we put on our face, which are core to in style, obviously. But it's also about the homes in which we live. So it was really an opportunity for me to do that. And I had complete backing of everyone at Pacific. And I think just having that, you know, that there to help you along the way and to make sure we had focus groups that looked at it for us, made sure that we were on the right track. And I think that's really important that you have that backing. Um, and of course, the other thing is that, you know, like James before me, everyone's going app crazy. We, um, we've just got a mobile site for, the, for this issue. We have a very important marquee brand called Best Beauty Buyers, where we ask you know, the best hairstylists, the best makeup artists. You're nodding, you know it. <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> Hall of Fame, where we nominate the 101 best beauty products in the market. And for the first time, we've been able to innovate by having a mobile site that goes with it. We've partnered with David Jones. Our readers can you know, have in their palm of their hand the 101 products all year long and they can navigate and then they can buy the products online at David Jones. So it's fantastic. I just wonder, going back to the inclusion of you know, more style pages, has that broadened the, the advertising opportunities then too? Have you been able to get some new, new Yeah, look, to be to... honest, I didn't start out thinking like that. I did start thinking of it purely as a reader opportunity. But once I got in and I realised, well, you know, there might be an opportunity there for us to reach out to some of those you know, traditional sort of homemaker title advertisers that may not have advertised in InStyle. Because obviously we know that you know, this market, they passionate about interiors but may not necessarily be buying some of the other homemaker titles. So absolutely, I hope so. <laughs> Early days. <laughs> and where is InStyle positioned? Is it a relatively high-end title? I mean, do you get a lot of luxury advertisers? And is that the sort of best space to be in at the moment? Well, it's certainly a, a better place to be. I mean, luxury market mm -hmm. is generally doing a lot better than other categories. Um, I mean, I think InStyle is quite fortunate and it does occupy quite a unique space in the market. And really, I guess that's one of the reasons I was attracted to the title because you know, we've got, obviously we say, see our main competitors as Vogue and Harper's Bazaar, and we outsell both of those. But they are very aspirational, almost coffee table-like artistic. In style still has all that beautiful photography. We have the best fashion you can get, but we're a little bit more accessible. So we do, you know, we do give our readers a bit more advice on how to put an outfit together. We're quite known for that. And I think, you know, that's how I dress. I like to, I want the latest pieces, but I also want a little bit of advice on how to put it together. And our readers are just like that. Elle, of course, is uh, relaunching back in Australia uh, later this year. Do you see that? Is that going to be another competitor then to, to Insta? Oh, uh, look, I think that they'll be targeting a little bit more on the lifestyle category, a little bit more up against Madison and Marie Claire. But, you know, a competitor is a competitor. You know, this is a very crowded market and we have to absolutely be ready for it. I mean, I'd, 
I'd be foolish to sit here and be complacent about another magazine coming into the market. But, you know, fantastic. I'm excited by it. Like, bring it on. Like, let's try and be really aggressive and it gives me the opportunity. I'm new, I'm excited, I'm enthusiastic about this product. And now I've got six months to really make sure I've got this magazine as perfect as it can be. So that when, when it launches, we're in the strongest position we can be in. How good is it being part of an international brand, you know, that's in style all around the world? Can you draw on that? Well, certainly. I mean, that's the best thing about InStyle in a way. I mean, we have 17, 17 global titles in the InStyle franchise. But the mothership, obviously, is New York. Um, InStyle in the US is the biggest selling fashion magazine by far. Um, they sell, you know, nearly two, they sometimes sell two million copies a month. I mean, their numbers we can't even dream of. But what that means is that InStyle in the US has got such cachet and credibility. And so it means that, for example, when InStyle Australia, is you know, contacting a Hollywood celebrity to say, would you be interested in being on our cover? That brand has such power that we are able to access those celebrities. So, yeah, very strong brand. Looking, and, uh, looking um, at the sort of ad outlook just too quickly for, for the rest of the year, are you sort of um, hopeful that, that there'll be a bit of a turnaround? Yeah, look, I'm feeling quite good. I mean, we're closing our April issue now and we're going to make budget. So, you know, I think when you've got a strong proposition, you've got a strong magazine, I think it all comes back to quality, doesn't it? I mean, if you have the right product, we have very good profile of our readers. So I'm feeling very positive. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kirsten Gully there, InStyle Editor. All right, let's turn to some other news. Of course, Nine Entertainment sending an email to staff in the past week detailing how they'll be cutting those costs, as reported last week. A pay freeze has been put in place until the ad market improves, and it's seeking voluntary redundancies with the closing date set for the 15th of February. Let's get the details with uh, James Manning, our co-host. James, looking at this, any details of numbers yet in terms of those voluntary redundancies? Not really. We or... talked last week, and we that, at that stage they hadn't spoken about redundancies, and we speculated maybe the first start would be voluntary and that's in fact what's happened. Uh, Jeff Brown, the uh, managing director out there, said yeah look also the annual pay reviews we won't be doing those for the time being and he really made it plain to the staff that there has to be a significant sort of turnaround in the, in the economy that they're, they're dealing with before they can really think about um, revisiting that. Just on to another story as well, we've seen some pretty good numbers from the AFR for that free summer trial online. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, they did a deal with Westpac. Westpac uh, sponsored the um, online, uh, the app for the uh, financial review over summer. And they got a lot of people coming in sampling them. I spoke to some of the uh, AFR people at the BRW launch this week and they said, yeah, it looks fantastic. The trick now is, is to convert some of those people who've been sampling the product, uh, convert them to subscribers because when you've got a new thing like that, it's, it's really crucial that you can get a lot of sampling. So they've done the first part of the puzzle. Now they need to convert some of those to sales. Um, of course, uh, well, veteran political journalist Michelle Grattan as well has been uh, leaving the age for academia news this week. Yeah, University of Canberra she's going to, uh, to teach there, but she's, also, she's going to keep her membership of the uh, press gallery down in Canberra. She's going to be writing for The Conversation. That's a... Uh, published by the university's a, uh, online forum, edited by a former age uh, editor, Andrew Jasper. Mm -hmm. um, and just also Fairfax launching the Ultimate Footy uh, competition Yeah, as well. it's a uh, fantasy football game. The Herald Sun's done very well in the past with something they call Supercoach. The age has sort of missed out a little bit on that. So they saw this product last year and they went out and they bought it. And they've just done a massive launch this week to try and uh, try and get into that space where, and it's just further engaging with you. AFL's obviously very big for, for the age. They cover it well employ invest a lot in that so if they can keep those readers uh, on their website and, and um, link it with their editorial uh, they should do well out of it. And apparently there was a quite a battle for the rights to Adele Ferguson's Gina Reinhart biography but Screen Time's won. Yeah, Screen Time's come out with that. There was at least one other person, we're not sure if it was another TV company or someone wanting to make a movie of it. Uh, screen Time, they haven't done a deal with a network uh, broadcaster yet but you've got to think it won't be far away and you've also got to think probably Channel 10 won't be part of the bidding process of that. Of course Gina's one of the uh, significant shareholders there and I, I guess it's a project they might sidestep. Um, just some personnel moves as well. The former Seven marketing boss, Melissa Madden's joined BBC Worldwide Australasia. Yeah, she uh, left. I think she left Seven last year. So yeah, it was the, there through some of the uh, glory days for Seven over that last decade. They did some uh, fantastic business. Their ratings really took off, and she was part of that team that, that took them to new levels and uh, heading over to BBC, where there's some of the big jobs to do. I think. 
Um, now, Chrissy Swan, that on-air confession this week, a big talking point uh, after that paparazzi pic. Yeah, it was an interesting story, wasn't it? She, uh, paparazzi photographer, snapped her having a, a quiet ciggy. She, she didn't tell anybody she was a sort of a closet smoker, a party puffer, what, whatever you will, but um, it really traumatised her and it motivated her to come out and, you know, confess all. And so uh, a few cynics are saying, look, it's sort of she's back on primetime TV next week. She's got a new radio show. But, mm. but I think, you know, she, I think you can take her for a word and it's a, a fairly genuine uh, confession it's, and it's not really a, a big start or not too much of a one anyway. Um, Mushroom's 40th birthday and a big announcement. Um, yeah Michael, Michael Gidinski a lot of you know they they've had a big party in Melbourne this week and they said there would be a big announcement a lot of people thought well maybe Gidinski will use this as a time to step down or pass on the company but he, he didn't he didn't step down but he's sort of handing the reins a little bit if you like to his son Matt's coming on as an executive director Mushroom done fantastically well over those 40 years uh, got a, about 20 different divisions in the company now all right, let's turn to the TV ratings. Uh, this for week five, uh, the Australian Open, uh, the men's final, obviously, the carryover, as you mentioned there. Uh, but really, um, we'll talk about my kitchen rules in a moment. But, uh, yeah, it's just taken off this obviously, year, Obviously, yes. Just pushes to a new level. Dominating there and just turning the page, uh, Nine News doing well too in the top ten yeah, and also 2020. Cricket, just look at the subscription TV, top ten for week five as well, uh, the movie Men in Black 3. Yeah, movie at number one there, which you don't see that happen a lot. And um, a few of the you know, regular favourites, Family Guy, The Simpsons, sure. Futurama in there yeah, as well. On Fox 8, yep. And uh, Come Dine With Me, Australia for yep. Lifestyle, number seven. wrestling in there too. Absolutely. Um, just looking at My Kitchen Rules, blowing them out of the water, mm. why is seven gone early then? Why not wait till survey starts? Well, they, they did it last year. I mean, it does seem they've done it early, but you look back and yeah, they did the same strategy last year. They, they maximised the tennis audience. Uh, that gives them a fantastic lead-in. And so they got a bit of criticism this year for real, for promoting the show so hard and a lot of their other programs through the tennis, just, you know, really, really forcing those, really ingraining it in the viewers. But it pays off that sort of promotion. And, and this shows this week did uh, three successive nights over two million, you know. That, we haven't seen numbers like that since The Voice. And even then, that was a couple of times a week. But but here, that's uh, four and four nights this week. Before this season ends, we'll probably see it five nights a week. So it's uh, seven are in a fantastic spot to sort of lock off that uh, first quarter of the survey year. The loss of Jesse and, and Biswa, though, they're much That's maligned, sad, <laughs> much maligned <laughs> contestants. What do you yeah. mean? Is that going to hurt the ratings numbers, though? Um, no, I don't think it will, you know. I've, some people on the show, yeah, look, say there's plenty of good stuff to come. And, you know, so for them to say that after what we've just seen, they must have a few uh, rabbits uh, up their sleeve, I think. At the, <laughs> To, to pull out, but yeah, and no, I think I think they did fantastic. A lot of people were didn't like them, but even then, it's still it, it, they watched, you know, yeah. and it's just yeah, fantastic stuff. All right, looking at the Sandy Roberts story, you know, was he leaving <laughs> Seven? Was he going to Fox Sports or not? What, mm, what's ended yeah, well, up? Harold Sun had a front page story earlier this week. He was leaving the channel. Thirty four years he'd been there, and he'd signed to uh, come on as a host at Fox Footy. Um, that announcement never came. Seven finally came out and said, look, no, he's actually staying. And there's been a follow-up story from the Herald Sun again saying, well, he actually is going, but maybe not yet. So I think there's some contractual problems he's got to sort out. I think we will see him eventually at uh, Fox Woody. And just quickly, today, tonight, lives on. Yeah, yeah, we talked about last week. We didn't, we were sort of, you know, trying to find a reason they would axe it. We couldn't find it, and they've, they've indeed have decided to keep it. Lots of promos running for Helen Kaplos in the Sydney and Melbourne markets where she'll be hosting uh, separate state editions elsewhere. So I think it's probably a good decision by Sydney. Um, just quickly as well, the Super Bowl, what were its audiences like? I know in the US yeah, they're massive, huge. massive, 108 million people, the third most watched TV event ever in uh, the US. Of course, numbers one and two are also Super Bowl audiences. But look, at tiny audiences by comparison in Australia, a little over 300,000 people. It was shown in three places, on one, the HD channel, at, at, uh, also on 10, and at ESPN. And each of those uh, broadcasters had about 100,000 people watching. All right, James. As always, thanks so thanks much for Brody. that. James Manning, the editor and publisher of Media Week. That's all we've got time for on the show from the team here. Thanks for your company. Mm -hmm.